Hello Power Painters and welcome to this new tutorial video. I'm Taylor Payton and I'm going to be taking you guys through how you can make a living as an artist using simple tactics for generating profits using your art. Now I kind of covered this topic before where I sort of told my story in a video on this very same YouTube channel and I was using it to sort of promote a product at the time called Art Commission Doctor. Now Art Commission Doctor has since become free and I highly encourage you to get it if you're just starting out. Um, the, vi the reason why I'm making this video is because I've actually uh, learned a lot in the interim between Art Commission Doctor and now, and so I started a whole new one for all of my Power Painters Art Bolt subscribers as well as the people who just want to get this course, and that is the Art Commission Specialist. So basically, I just outline a five-step strategy for unlocking the secrets to getting commission work because so many people are puzzled by it, and I had it figured out since I was basically 17 years old, so... I think that it's just really easy, the step-by-step -step processes you have to go through, but not enough people know how to uh, actually follow through on these steps or do these actionable events with the information that they're being given. So if you guys did want to grab um, Art Commission Doctor, that's just on the uh, Gumroad slash Power Painters page. I'll have a link in the description box. It's down here. It's completely free, and it will give you the most rudimentary aspect of what I'm going to be giving you here, but not as expansive as we're going to be talking about in this video. Um, you can check out some other really cool stuff in the store too if you want. There's a yearly uh, edition for the Art Vault students as well as a month-to-month -month edition. Uh, you'll be getting everything in the store for free if you get either of these. So uh, You can also pre-order the Art Commission Specialist. Uh, that'll be out, uh, I believe, late this month, late August. So. That'll be fun, but for right now, let's actually get into the meat of what we're going to be talking about here, which is how you can make a living. So, first and foremost, I do believe that we're just going to cover some of these subjects so we can clear the air about them. It's going to make it easier to understand the concepts that I'll develop later in the video, and it's also going to give you an overview of what I'll be covering in much more depth in uh, our commission specialists. So, first and foremost is how to get the commissions. They're are two kinds of commissions in my mind. There's private and there's commercial. Now, private can also be called non-commercial, meaning that it's not for a company. It's not for somebody who's incorporated or going to be using it for something that is outside of their D&D campaign, you know? Um, it's just a way of saying that it's not like working for Paizo or Magic the Gathering. It's saying that it's for a person as opposed to an entity that plans to use the work to make even more money. Uh, and there's a distinction that we make so that we charge uh, the amount we charge based on whether it's one of these two. Now, the next thing is being visible, which is rising above the noise. There's so much going on in today's day and age. Information is flying at us faster than ever, and I know I sound tired of it because it gets kind of exhausting having to parse all the complexity. Uh, that's why we tend to remember stuff that is, uh, as Seth Godin calls it, uh, remarkable. You can make a remark about it. You can say something about it to somebody. So. You want to be visible, you want to rise above all the noise there. Now there's several ways to do that. You can become a specialist in a certain kind of art. You can uh, create a series that has a continuity because most people don't have the attention span to actually finish a series, like just a quick little thing of, oh, I wanted to do a bunch of giant robots that are based off of beetles or something, you know? Just anything that's going to take you from just another noisy little bit on the TV screen to your own full program that people can understand and enjoy and invest in. Um, so we'll talk more about that later. Uh, one of the next things is an optional in-house artist marketing section for Art Commission Specialist. And that just means you plan on being in-house as opposed to freelancing, meaning you want to find a studio that is going to take you on as their artist. And you go in and you get all the benefits and the nice stuff and you... Uh, basically that studio should become like family to you as you move forward in your career or you find another studio. Like some artists like the studio hop and that's really cool. Um, I've been to a couple studios and I've enjoyed the experiences there, but I found I like freelancing better. So at the same time, um, it really is down to personal preference, but I can show you guys how you can um, market to be an in-house artist versus marketing yourself as a freelancer who just provides services uh, on, the, on your own sort of, uh, shall we say, platform. Next, there's contracts and how to look over those. A lot of contracts in today's day and age are meant to kind of strip you of your artistic rights, and that's just kind of the nature of the business at this point, unfortunately. If you want to do your own thing, then you 
are much better off writing your own contracts, especially uh, if you're negotiating with smaller businesses or things that aren't corporate entities, because the bigger guys usually have their own contracts, their own legal divisions, stuff like that. But then we go all the way down the sliding scale to people who are willing to work out a joint contract with you or other things like that. Now, you won't always need a contract, but it's just a good protective measure, depending on where you live and the laws of your country and whatnot, and just to make sure people have an understanding of what's going to be going on. Um, next, we'll talk a little bit about agencies. So agencies are just things or corporations or sometimes just one or two people that will go out and find the work for you and bring it to you for you to complete so you don't have to do any of the marketing if that's really not your thing. Now that being said, agencies take a cut, right? So they have to have something to compensate them for the service they're providing. So they usually take 15 or 10% of the total sale that they made. Uh, bringing that client to you to work on. So a lot of artists do very, very good with agencies. It's an amazing way to make a living and you can focus more on your art. It's a good way to um, just not have to do a lot of this marketing stuff that I'm going to show you. So if you want to market yourself to an agency and then be done with that, once you find a good agency, then you basically just do the work for that they bring you. So um, another thing is being too old or young to start. I just want to address this quickly because Either way, you're probably not. Most people just want to sabotage themselves because we have low self-esteem generally as people, and that's okay because that gives us the opportunity to overcome it. What I think is just uh, a learned helplessness or self-victimization, thinking that for some reason your age would really, really dictate whether or not you can do this. But no, the only thing that dictates whether or not you can do this is you and your decision and your own uh, power to say, I'm going to do this and I'm just going to follow these simple steps and it's going to happen. So uh, being too old or young to start, just put that one out of your mind. You're probably not. Um, you just If you want to do it, then just do it. It's like that funny, weird Shia LaBeouf meme that's going around. Just, just, just do it. Okay, cool. So um, knowing what to charge. The next thing is how you discern a price, basically, how you put a number to what it is you're doing or completing for somebody uh, in any form. Now that is a huge, huge topic to cover. That's why I am making a whole program devoted to this stuff. But I'll just go into some simple breakdowns here. Now when I took the um, business advice and stuff I've read from other business books and such, it really says you can use all these equations and ways to generate, you know, how much I need to comfortably make a living and save 10% and all this stuff. But you can just say simple things like, if I could make 100 bucks a day, I'm cool. Or if I have 500 surplus at the end of every month, then I'm good. Then this is what I charge based on meeting that goal. So basically you set a goal of the amount you want and then you would have to figure out the other pieces to get that goal met. So if you wanna make 2.5K a month and that's all you need, then you have to figure out who you need to go to, what kind of art you need to do, and then you have your goal in sight. It's like putting it into your GPS. You know you're gonna get there, you know there's a route, but it's just having that nice number that's going to give you a way to discern whether or not you're gonna charge this much or that much, whether you're charging X or charging Y, um, and who you're going to charge, what kind of budgets you're gonna go for. So it's just targeting your clients and your skill set to meet the amount of money you want to make, basically. So that makes good sense, hopefully. Um, so let's move on to another section now where I can unveil even more information for you guys to sort of understand this whole process. So in this section, I wanna talk mostly about these uh, three things and then just a couple little cliff notes at the end. Um, so first and foremost is building an eye-catching and targeted portfolio. Now, I talked a little bit about this just previously when you have heard me discuss about what kind of clients you're going to go for, how to target your portfolio to those clients. And that just means looking at the people you want to work for if they're commercial, um, or and most likely they are. I mean, most of us got into this because we like video games or anime or card games or board games or stuff like that. So, um, or even graphic design or corporate design. You know, all this stuff has a commercial aspect to it for the most part. I mean, you can make a lot of good money if you're a fine artist going to gallery shows, but then again, you need to, or being in gallery shows rather, but then again, you need to understand what kind of paintings those galleries use. It's like you're trying to match your kind of stuff and use your self-expression to 
be in alignment with where you want to be showcased or who you want to work for. And the way you do that is with your portfolio. Now, you only really need three things to get work. You need to be good at what you do, you need to hit deadlines, be able to hit deadlines, and you also need to be nice or kind or good to work with. So if you're those three things, you're good. You really only need to be those three things. But let's talk about that first one. Let's talk about getting uh, that targeted portfolio and having eye-catching work. Now, I've got my portfolio open right here, and this is my start page. It looks better on not a laptop screen because my screen on my recording software program isn't big enough for this. Uh, but it's just my art on the main page, and if you click it, it takes you to illustration, but you can also just go to illustration. Then you get to see my thumbnails at a glance here, and it's just, I like to choose my six best works for every category. Um, so here we have, you know, mostly you can see I do a lot of girls uh, on the fringe here, and then we still have more horizontal format pieces, which are uh, sword-wielding kind of... Uh, warrior types and so you can see I have a type that I've already catered to it's a lot of fantasy it's a lot of spell and sorcery and it's ladies and armored dudes so in the concept art section you can see that I can also branch beyond that if need be if a client were to be looking at this and you see like more like portraiture-esque stuff or large-scale mech design um, some concept art where I'm changing the outfit and different um, variations on a character showcasing like color and light knowledge and all that kind of stuff, having concepts of different creatures and different um, like outfit design and all that fun stuff. So basically here I am just showcasing what I can do in fantasy and sci-fi and with girls and robots and creatures and all this stuff. So I have a portfolio that's mostly genre oriented. So I could work for card games, tabletop stuff, and this is most of the work that I get to be honest. It's for like, I've just finished up pieces for Modifius Entertainment. Um, I worked at Committee Films as an illustrator as well. Uh, and also at the School of Interactive Design recording tutorials um, for their stuff. So I did this painting here for them. And I got all this work based on my website, right? Based on the stuff that people saw here. And it wasn't even stuff that's as good as it is now. It was stuff that was slightly less good, like a year and a half to a year ago. So this is my portfolio. I do six um, works in the categories. Uh, this is just some miscellaneous fine art stuff. And this is like my experimental end of the website. Like I don't really get too many converting clients from this end yet. So I'm probably going to be attuning more uh, focus to fine art and seeing if I can break into that niche eventually but right now I know that my illustration and concept art pays my bills just by sending this website out using the marketing tactics that I'm going to be showing you um, so that's just an overview of my website and the target that I aim to hit and how I specialize my stuff to actually be able to cater to clients and the services that they need because basically at the end of the day you're going to be with an art director or a client that just needs you to create something cool for them and hopefully it's something that you're good at you know something like you know you really like to draw to draw girls or you really like to draw dragons and you specialize in a certain category maybe it's landscapes maybe it's just really strong pencil drawing whatever it is you would go to clients that have that sort of flavor make sense cool so dealing with and mostly avoiding bad clients now, bad clients could mean a number of things. It could mean they have no budget. I consider those bad clients 90% of the time um, that they are too demanding or they have very little budget and they want really high quality. And my personal philosophy on that has always been I didn't spend all this time cultivating these skills so I can not make a living and do somebody else's stuff for no real compensation. Like they'll try to tell you exposure. Uh, my project's going to be big and your name will be on it. It will say you did the art. And that's terrible, guys. That is awful. Don't go for that. Don't fall for that. People just don't want to cultivate the talent and think they have the vision to bring something to the forefront without having some sort of powerful skill themselves. So unless they have a great track record, then walk away from that stuff because it's how you avoid bad clients. Now some clients are bad just because they want a lot of revisions and they don't want to pay for those revisions. And revisions means they want alterations as you're sending them work in progress updates. Um, which I get into all this stuff, like I said, is going to be laid out so much more succinctly in the course. But this is just kind of how the process works at a glance, right? So. Um, if you're having a client that always wants you to keep doing more and more changes, then you're going to have to cut them off and cap them. 
especially via contract. I always include in my contracts, and I've written some for the course uh, that you can use for free once you get it. They'll be absolutely yours 100%. Um, in these contracts, I just lay out, hey, I only do three revisions because I send you three work in progress updates. Now, uh, if you go beyond this, then I'm charging you $50 per revision or $100 per revision or I'm going to start charging my hourly rate of $44, you know. So this is the kind of stuff that you learn as you go along, as you kind of navigate all this commission stuff and find a way to build your own niche in this, uh, in this art kind of community. So you're basically just taking your work and presenting it to people in this five-step process. And so, I've, like I said, we were fortunate enough to go over all this information prior, so now I can actually give you the five-step process. It's, like I said, not going to be as deep as I can get into with the course because I have a limited amount of time, but I can still give you the overview of it, and that's going to be the simple marketing schedule we're going to be talking about. So right now, I've already written down a course outline, and I'm making videos for each of these that goes much more in-depth, and I'm going to hit them at a glance. So first of all, we talked about portfolio prep and presentation. You have to have a website or some place where people can see it, like a Tumblr, a DeviantArt, an ArtStation, any of those. And then that is a number one. That's why all the other ones are under number one. We have to have something to show people. We have to have a place that they can go and see the work really easily, really well designed and simple and clean interface. Loads fast and it shows everything you need pretty much at a glance. Next thing happens to be gathering leads. That means wherever you do want to work, you have to have leads to that kind of work. So your portfolio is targeted in that you have a certain niche you're going for. And then you're going to find leads in that niche. So you have to prepare your portfolio. Part of the portfolio prep is finding sort of a target, but then you have to grab those leads from that target market. So if it were tabletop games, you would you know, be looking to work for D&D &D or like Mutant Chronicles or other stuff like that where you know all these different uh, places you could find in a game shop, an email, you have to go and get that information. So this is the part where we find the email addresses, the addresses, uh, every form of contact information that we can, the phone numbers, just anything where we can be grabbing these and getting in touch with these people and showing them what we can do, showing them what we've created and that we can do it for them and we love to basically you know you're providing a service the stuff you get excited about um, that's pretty much step number two um, after, like I said oh I, I kinda covered step three accidentally too so after you gather the leads then you expose your art to them you have to show them your art you get them that portfolio you show them uh, your work at a glance maybe you meet them at a convention maybe you know that uh, the people from let's say Tour books will be at Iluxcon. So you bring your portfolio to Iluxcon and you start to show them your stuff and you know what kind of stuff they want. So they you just shake their hand, you say introduce yourself, you say, Hey, would you do you have a little bit of time? Take a look at my stuff, you know? I'd really appreciate it. And they say, Oh yeah, or oh no, you know. The worst they can ever say is no. So just go up there and just be kind and courteous, show them your stuff, tell them you love what they do, and hopefully get their contact information, and give them yours. You know, it's really a simple process. We like to sabotage our scale or we like to sabotage ourselves. It's kind of funny. I messed up the sentence. Uh, we sabotage ourselves or we kind of figure out ways to not do the things we have to do in order to succeed. But we know exactly what we need to do. And it's just to talk to the right people and show them the right stuff. And then the steps are just obvious after that. So that is the exposure of the art step. We want to convert those viewers of our art to clients. They become our clients. They are people who first see the art and then they start to, you know, they like it and they know that they have a place for it and then they become clients. That could be at an agency, that could be at a studio. We're just trying to get into a place. It goes from just somebody who sees what we do and sees us as the proprietor of what we do and turn that into a relationship an ongoing one hopefully where it becomes you know remunerative for both parties because that's the ideal is we want equivalent exchange or sometimes we aim to over deliver our value because we know it's going to come back to us threefold or whatever you know you do the best job you absolutely can once you find these people um, and you convert them to clients after that after you've gotten some success then you just scale your operation so you make more money 
um, you find bigger clients or whatever that means in terms of growing. You know, you scaling is just growing. You're taking the operation you're using and you're expanding upon it. Um, and in that, you're going to be doing some tweaking. You're going to be dropping some aspects that don't quite work. You know, maybe you find you spend way too long on these types of pieces and so you fix your workflow and then you can fit another one of those pieces in during your week. And that's a whole nother like 800 bucks, you know? It's stuff like that. Those are the tweaks that you make in order to make your operation even better. Because once you have a system in place, then you're going to be just making sure that system runs the best it can, which is optimization. We're getting it to the point where it's optimized. We have our set schedule. It's working. It's giving us everything we need. And we're living a good life. You know, we're making good money. And we're finding out how to... Uh, do it even better, do all of it even better constantly because growth is the only thing that's going to keep us uh, rocking here. It's going to keep us just amped up to get better at our art, to do better work for our clients, and to find people with bigger budgets who want to give us even more money to do what we do, or even find ways to create our own stuff and monetize that. You know, it, it's really you know, I'm talking all about money here because that is the point of this particular video, but I just wanted to go on record that if we didn't have to use money, I would totally just do completely different stuff, you know, more surreal, more abstract, more, I wouldn't try to figure out all these ways to monetize it, but you have to do this stuff in order to even just survive, but if you have to survive, you might as well thrive, you know what I mean? So all these tactics and tips and all this cool stuff is really nice and I want you to be able to use it I want you to have these tools so that you can do what you love for a living but ideally the transition in like the biggest part is to become so financially independent that it's no longer about the money if there are a way to do that without the money that's awesome elucidate me to it because I'll probably take that path but the other way is just to become so well off doing what you do that you can just do it for not just for yourself but do it for fans you know create art books or like I have another income stream of tutorials you know I really love to make these videos because I know I can help a lot of people which uh, helps me it makes me feel really good to know that I have the knowledge to allow others to succeed and learn from the mistakes I made and the successes I've had so just finding ways uh, to diversify your income could be part of optimization, you know, or finding ways to transition out of what you're doing or breaking around ruts is the, the other part of optimization. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much this course in a nutshell. Again, if you want to go over to the Power Painters uh, store page, you can pre-order this. If not, I hope you got enough value out of this video that you really can get started doing more stuff. Ask any questions you want in the description box and I'll do my absolute best to answer them. Again, our commission doctor is free. It shows you uh, one or two simple strategies to getting commissions, uh, maybe from like forums or DeviantArt or something. Uh, but really, it's all about getting to the point where you can sustain yourself with your art. Uh, that's kind of the bottom line of all this. So thank you for watching. Hope you got tons and tons of value. Again, ask any questions. I'm more than happy to answer them. I really want to be helpful. I want to be able to provide value and pay it forward, guys. So I hope you have an excellent time hunting for work, uh, gathering new clients, and just doing what it is you do and loving it every single day. Thanks for watching this Power Painters video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Check out the Power Painters store for free and premium downloads and courses. If you want to receive everything in the store and future items, become an Artfold student. Month by month and yearly enrollment are available. That's it for now. Take care, Power Painters, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to practice.